Hello everyone and welcome to a quick tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple day-night controller which smoothly lerps the sky into nighttime and then back into daytime. You're also going to be able to individually set how long you want nighttime and daytime to last. And we're also going to create a way that the rest of your game is going to know that it's nighttime and daytime. So if you want to just spawn enemies at night or something like that, it's completely extensible that way. So just to give a quick demonstration here, you can see the sky slowly starts to get darker and darker as it goes through the day. And as it hits nighttime, it starts to move a bit slower. And nighttime obviously in this case lasts a bit longer than day. It will get to the end of nighttime and then rather than just resetting, it will start cycling backwards to get to the point where it's going to shift back to day. And then you can see it will start getting lighter and lighter over time. And eventually we'll end up with a full day cycle again. Now these values are completely settable however you want them as well by the end of this. So I'm going to start off with a nice blank scene here. I've got a plane that I've created and two cubes just to help things stand out. And I've created one material just for the plane which is just a standard green colour. Um, it's just to make this obviously look a bit different to the sky and give it a little more depth. I've done nothing else to the scene, so there's a camera with a skybox, a directional light that I haven't touched at all, and we are ready to start. So the first thing we're going to do is create two materials that are going to represent our night and our daytime. So I'll call this daytime, and I will change this from standard. We're going to change it to skybox and then cube map. And because it's going to be my daytime, I'm going to set it to a lighter blue like that. And this is adjustable however you want, obviously. And then I'm just going to duplicate this. We're going to name this nighttime, and I'll make that a much darker blue. Uh, let's say that can be my nighttime. Maybe that can be my nighttime. Okay, now that we have what our daytime and nighttime scripts will look like, if you've set these up correctly and they're skyboxes, you will be able to just drag them in and they'll become your daytime here and then your nighttime here, obviously. And effectively, all we're trying to do is lerp the two materials over the top of each other over a period of time. So we're going to create a folder real quick. I'm just going to call that scripts. And inside of scripts, we'll create a C-sharp script that I'm going to call day night controller. And then we'll open that one up. Now, starting with our variables, we're going to need a few things in here. For starters, we're going to need a public float that we'll call time of day. And we want this value to be between zero and one. So it's actually like a zero is completely daytime and one is completely nighttime. So we can add this range variable to it and we say 0, 0,1. We're then going to create a private float called day duration in mins, and we'll set that to, let's say 0.2f to begin with, a private float night duration in mins, and we'll set that to 0.4f. I'm gonna mark both of these as serializable fields just so we can see them in the inspector. Then we'll create a public float that we'll call current time. We want that to be public in case you want to reference that somewhere else in the game. Okay, a public bool called is daytime. I'm going to create a private bool that we'll call cycling to night. And this is just going to be a good way for us to visualize if we're going to nighttime or if we're going from nighttime to daytime. We'll then create a private material that we're going to call night mat. That'll be our night material. Private material, day mat. And then one last that's going to be private material. And this will be our skybox mat. So this is what we're actually going to end up using to lurk between. If we want to access this elsewhere as well, we can create a public static instance of this. So public static day night controller, and we'll call it instance. And then inside of our awake function, we're going to just say instance is equal to this. So we're referencing ourselves. And I'm just going to add serializable field to a few of these here. So we'll add it to our material so you can see them in the inspector and set them in the inspector as well. And we'll also add it to our cycling to night just so you can see it there as well. So jumping back over to our game, I'm just going to create an empty here that I'll call day night controller. I'll set it to 000, just so it's at the beginning, and we'll set our day night controller script here. Now, effectively what we have here, without any logic right now, is we're going to know what the nighttime material is, we'll know what the daytime material is. This is the one that we're going to be setting as the active skybox. And then we've got a time that we want day to last, a time that we want night to last, the current time that we're at, and that's going to be between 0 and 1, so that'll be between this slider here, and the ability to slide this back and forth. We also have a is daytime, so we know whether it's daytime or not, and we know whether we're cycling towards nighttime or cycling away from nighttime. So I'm just going to lock this here, I'm going to jump into materials, I'm going to say daytime is daytime and nighttime is nighttime. We don't need to set this because we'll create that at runtime. Now it's time to start this off. 
I'm going to start this off by cycling towards night. So we'll say cycling to night equals true. We're going to say is daytime is equal to true because if we're cycling towards night, then we're starting in the day. We'll say skybox mat is equal to a new material that we're going to just set to the default as our day material. So we're going to start with the day. We might as well set the new material as the day in case you haven't set anything yet. Then we'll say render settings dot skybox is equal to our skybox mat. And then we can jump into our update. We're going to call update time here, which is a method that we're going to create. So if you hit alt and then hit enter, it will create this method for us. And this method is basically going to be responsible for moving the slider along. And then we're just going to have the lerp reference this point in the slider, and that will change our day and night. Now inside of our update time, we're going to create a float. We'll call this time increment, and it will be equal to time.delta time divided by, and we're going to use some ternary functions here. It's basically a shorthand way to do an if else statement. I'll also probably put in the description below a longhand way if you're not familiar with this, um, but this is just a lot more concise way of writing it. So we're going to want to check is daytime. And if it is daytime, then we're going to say day duration in minutes multiplied by 60F. So that gives us our daytime in seconds. And if it isn't daytime, it must be nighttime. So nighttime duration in mins multiplied by 60F. Now we're going to have to set our current time. And with our current time, we're going to want to know whether we're going forwards or we're going backwards. And we're handling that through a variable that we've called cycling to night. So I'll say current time plus equals cycling to night. And if we are cycling to night, then we're going to say time increment as a positive value. Otherwise, we're going to say time increment as a negative value. Then all we have to do is a few checks. So we'll say if time of day is greater than 0.5F, then we just have to do a few checks to update our is time of day bool as well as our cycling to night bool. And the way we'll do that is by saying if time of day is greater than 0.5F, well, then we're now in nighttime. So is daytime is equal to false else is daytime is equal to true. And now we need to update our nighttime cycle, which is going to happen at the zero and the one ends of the scale. So we'll say if time of day is less than or equal to zero F, then cycling to night is equal to true. And if time of day is greater than or equal to one F, then cycling to night is equal to false. And finally, the last thing we need to do here is say time of day is equal to current time. And that's our update time script. And now we just need to apply that to our material and lerp the two values. So we'll say skybox mat dot lerp day material, night material, and we do it over the time of time of day. And then all we need to do is update our skybox. So render settings dot skybox is equal to our skybox material. And that's it. So if I hit play now, you can see our time of day is starting to cycle through. When we get to this 0.5, it should no longer be day. That's good, it's changed. It'll get all the way to the end, and then because we're gonna stop cycling tonight, we're gonna start cycling today, it'll go to one, and then it should go backwards and set is cycling tonight to zero, or to false, sorry. And then it'll just keep looping back and forth between night and day. And just to show that this can be changed, let's say we make daytime 0.1 and we make this 12 minutes then what we should see is it'll cycle through the day portion extremely fast and it'll get all the way to night really quick. And then once it gets to night, it'll just slow down very drastically. Yep, there we go. And so this will actually be, if you add this together, it'll be 24 minutes because it's gonna be 12 minutes to get here, 12 minutes to get back, and then 0.1 this way, 0.1 that way. One last thing I wanted to show here was actually how it can be used with uh, packages like Polyverse Skies, if you haven't used it before. It allows you to give a lot more effects inside of your material, like twinkling stars and clouds and so on. I'm not sponsored by them, but you know, it's just a useful tool to show you that it can integrate with proper projects. And if you're interested in this, I'm currently working on making a little base building game, and I'm probably gonna start doing some devlogs on this and teaching how to do each of the steps of making a base building game. So if that interests you, then please consider subscribing. As always, these videos wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. In the diamond tier, we have infinite canvas. In the emerald tier, we have demand games. In the gold tier, we have castle coders, Zope and maths math. In the silver tier, we have Sunday roast, Jim Hawkins with Halloumi and Hickey92. Thank you all. If you'd like to sign up, the link is down the bottom right there. It's patreon.com slash and I will see you guys in the next video.